give people a sort of primer into why is your gut health so important in not only your overall health, but why particularly, why, what is the connection between gut health and diabetes health? Let's start there. Um, yeah, absolutely. So it's interesting, these, these gut microbes, we evolved with them over 3 million years. And what that means is that through that entire process, you know, we lived longer and we were healthier humans as a result of our relationship with these gut microbes. And we ultimately allowed them to insert themselves, the 38 trillion of these invisible microorganisms, we allowed them to insert themselves into our physiology as humans, where they actually play a critical role in um, our digestion, our immune system, our metabolism. And when we talk about our metabolism, that's an umbrella term that includes inside of it, the blood, your blood glucose and your blood glucose regulation and your insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance, um, but also our hormones and our mood, our brain health, our energy levels. And, you know, if we're going to, let's zoom in for a moment on the metabolism, there's emerging research that is showing us that these gut microbes actually play an essential role in how our body functions from a metabolic perspective. So let me start first with blood fat before I talk about blood glucose. Specifically with blood fat, like when you eat a meal, your blood fat levels, they go up. And we know this because if you have read Mastering Diabetes, whether it's the book or you have been involved in the programs that you guys offer, which by the way, they're all fantastic, the book and the programs. But like if you, if you know this, then you know more than most healthcare practitioners, which is that blood fat is very relevant to insulin sensitivity. And specifically, blood fat after a meal is the most important part of what we're talking about because your blood glucose after a meal will be affected by your blood fat. And so anyway, if we look at the blood fat specifically, like what causes your blood fat to go to a certain level, believe it or not, there's research that uh, we, my friends at Zoe, uh, by the way, Zoe, for those who haven't heard of us, is a personalized nutrition company that, that basically teaches you how to eat for your own unique biology. And I'm their US medical director. So when I say we, I'm referring to the fact that like I'm actually a part of the Zoe team. We at Zoe did research that was published in the journal Nature Medicine in 2020, where we actually showed what are the factors that most powerfully predict your blood uh, fat levels, specifically your triglyceride levels after a meal. And what we found is that more so than like what you eat or your age or your gender or like what time of day you're eating, more than any of those things, even more than your genetic code, your gut microbiome powerfully is associated with your blood fat level. And, you know, it's, I mean, I could do it, but you guys have done it a million times. We all know when your blood fat goes up after a meal, this ultimately is going to affect your blood glucose because it affects your insulin sensitivity. Yeah. I mean, so you're, this is a fascinating topic here. And so I'm sure a lot of people are, could be confused here right? Because they have heard the exact opposite, right? They're saying, look, if you eat a lot of fat, that will stabilize your blood glucose. You're saying, no, it's actually going to cause uh, unfortunately high blood glucose readings. Like, like, explain the difference here. Like, w what's going on? How is the gut microbiome affected by the, the, like, the quantity of fat people are consuming and then affecting their blood fat? Like, talk to us about this. Okay. So let's take the gut microbiome out of the equation for a moment. And let's talk about what's coursing through your blood at the time that you eat a meal, which are free fatty acids. All right, so free fatty acids, this is blood fat. And these free fatty acids, ultimately, they are looking for a place to go. They don't want to be in your bloodstream. So there are certain places that these free fatty acids could look to, to basically set up shop. One is in fat cells. 
Maybe there's not a lot of room there. Maybe those fat cells are already pretty full. One is in liver cells and the other is in muscle cells. Now, this is very important for people to understand because at the same time that there's fat in your blood, there's also sugar in your blood. We call it glucose. So this glucose, it also is looking to get out of your bloodstream. Your glucose is looking for a new home to basically like go and hang out and just set up shop. And the classic places for the blood glucose to go include your liver and your muscle tissue. And the problem is that if fat has already taken up residence in these locations, it makes it difficult to cram the blood glucose in there. And we call this, there's a, an expression for this that you guys eloquently have described in your book and that you teach in your programs. And this is lipotoxicity. And lipotoxicity is when basically the body is out of balance. We're not talking about just eating a meal. We're talking about the body being out of balance. And because the body is out of balance, it is creating insulin resistance because of fat. It's the fat that's driving and fueling the insulin resistance. So, okay, now that we've established that this fat is so important and the levels of fat in your bloodstream are so important, let's bring it back to the microbiome one more time and just look at this through a simple lens. What I'm saying to you is when we raise our triglyceride level after a meal, the level at which we raise that triglyceride level is going to ultimately affect our insulin resistance through this lipotoxicity pathway. And if we look at, you know, what is going to affect your triglyceride levels, the gut microbiome is critically important to affecting your, your triglyceride level, more so than even what is it that you're eating, more so than your, uh, your gender, your age, there's your, your genetic code. So the point is that from a metabolic perspective, your gut microbiome is very important to blood sugar, blood fat, and even your diabetes regulation. Let's talk about blood sugar for a moment. So if we look in the same sort of way at blood sugar, the research that we've done at Zoe that was published in Nature Medicine in June of 2020, we looked to identify and understand like what are the specific factors that allow us to predict your blood sugar response after a meal? What is going to like tell us what's going to happen? And I'm going to tell you right now that the number one thing are your food choices. Now, this is a very empowering thing because you have the ability to make food choices that are better for controlling your blood sugar. But if you move beyond your food choices, very quickly, what you get into, end up getting into is your gut microbiome. If we were to try to understand what predicts your blood sugar after a meal, part of it is what you're eating. Part of it is your gut microbes. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what we want is whether you have type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, something in between, or honestly, no diabetes at all. We want a healthy metabolism. We want an engine running on clean fuel. We want insulin sensitivity so that we don't have to turn up the insulin to control our blood sugar. And the argument that I'm making based upon this data from Nature Medicine in June of 2020 is that part of this equation is the gut microbiome. So it is important for the listeners and the viewers to take this to heart of, yes, we want to control your blood sugar, but how, part of how we accomplish this is by improving the health of our gut microbiome.